Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. Today feels like the first day of fall. Yeah, it really does. And I know we try earlier on to conjure up those fall feelings, you know, like it gets cooler in the morning and you think like, oh, it's coming. But today we had a dramatic decrease in temperature. Like yesterday we were in the 90s, today we're in the mid to low 70s mm -hmm. so it was, is our high, but it wasn't accompanied by like a huge windstorm, which is usually what happens. When I see a 10 plus degree drop from day to day, that usually means a massive storm. And we had thunder and lightning for most of the morning, a little breeze and rain, but nothing dramatic. No. So it's just, it feels wonderful. The kids and I went and got a load of pumpkins this morning and did up one of our uh, staircase entryway areas. And this week has just seen so many fun things buttoning up, like the area. And I think we did a video of the area behind the barn, and I do think it's gonna go out before this yeah. one. We mulched back there. And the lane, the gravel lane is done back there. So it just looks so tidy. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good to see less of that powdery dirt. It's just been a great week. So I hope you guys have all had a great week as well. So now we can move on to some other fun projects like planting bulbs. Yay. <laughs> it's so fun to plant bulbs. Um, I did want to mention in that vein that we do now have a few new items in the store, including Bulb Tone, which is a fertilizer I use every time I plant bulbs. I think we're doing 10% off that one. Yeah. And there's also Iron Tone and um, Evergreen Tone. I don't know. Was there uh, others? Deadweed Brew, Dead is, Weed Brew. is new, I think, in the store, okay. too. And all of those are 10% off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. We'll Limited put all time. the information probably on the screen or down in the description box. Yeah. No code Download. needed. They're just the prices reflected. Yeah. Anyway, let's just jump into the videos from this past week. The first one was repurposing a bird bath and succulent arrangement with my mom. So we've had this bird bath that Henry Studio sent out, I don't even know how many years ago. It was when we got the Kensington oh, three-tier fountain. Long time it ago. It was like in that same grouping of things. Um, so it's been, was that the first year we were here? So like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And we set up the bird bath behind the then gazebo. We still had the gazebo at that time. We tucked it into a flower bed. And I just, it was back there for a while, but I was really bad about keeping it topped up. I really just dislike having a daily chore of having to take a hose out to like swap water in a bird bath, especially when it's a heavy topped one. And I, I saw lots of people say, well, why don't you just run drip to it? Well, then you have the drip tube. Like there's no real clean way to run a drip tube up through, like it wasn't a hollow base pedestal. You can't run it up through like you can. I mean, I suppose you could drill a hole if you had a hollow base pedestal. But the pedestal wasn't hollow? No. Oh, yeah. So like so. with this one, it had to run up the side and it would have looked horrible. But I just don't enjoy that kind of chore out in the garden. And now that we have fountains and things around in the pond, uh, the birds are fine. And I don't have to do a daily yeah. watering of the bird bath. So I thought, you know what? This is a beautiful piece. I would really like to still have it out in the garden, but I don't want to fill it with water. So let's fill it with plants. So I drilled three drain holes in the basin. And that stuff, Henry Studio concrete is thick. Yeah. It's like the thickest stuff ever. So we got three holes drilled in that. And then my mom had taken our kids out for a date. She comes and picks them up quite often and takes them out for a cookie or whatever. And she brought them back just in time to where I was like, do you want to plant this with me? You want to just stay for a little while? We can make a drink. And so we had the best time. Samantha, my mom, and I planted this bird bath up with succulents just from what we have here. So that felt nice, just utilizing a lot of what we already have. And then we put it in the Hartley. So it's just a really fun kind of random project to fill an afternoon. Rebecca said, won't you have to take the succulents in for the winter? Well, in this case, since they ended up in the Hartley, they're good to go for winter. If I had put it out in the garden, in the landscape, like I had initially planned to do, yes, we would have had to move it in, uh, which in not too long. So it's probably a good thing it ended up where it did. BJ Schultz said, beautiful arrangement. What do you do when succulents get leggy? Uh, you can behead succulents. So a lot of them, I wonder if I have a leggy one in here. Voila, look, look at, at this that. one. Yeah. So this one's got a bunch of aerial like roots forming in the air. So with a succulent like this, you can take your snips, which I must have taken out. So I'm gonna use my scissors and you can cut the head right off the, the bottom like this. That is beheading a succulent right there. You can keep this and you can uh, root all the leaves and then you can cut the stem down to the bottom and a lot of times they form new babies around the base of the stem. But with this one, you let that end dry out a little bit. I take these leaves off. You can propagate those. Oh, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, you let that end heal for maybe a day or two just by setting it out in air so that it dries. Uh, and then you just pop it down in some cactus soil and keep it 
moist and then they form new roots and take off. Typically they will not get leggy if they're getting proper light. This one happened to be under a light that was not working. It was under the bottom one for a long time and so I don't really like get up under there and look. Oh. And I could tell that there was some light but one of the bulbs was completely out and one of them was like kind of dim. Mm. So the plants that were under there, I don't have anything, I vacated all of them. I need to get new light tubes. But um, anyway, that's what happened with this one. So they should be good in the Hartley, the ones we planted in that bird bath because it is super bright in there. Michelle said, every succulent I learn about says to plant them an inch apart, but yours are so packed and so much prettier. Will it be able to stay that way for uh, the way it is for a long time, for at least a year? Uh, usually when you plant succulents, especially in together like that, they kind of sense their, their proximity to each other and they don't grow as quickly. Um, so typically I can get away with just normal grooming of plants, you know, taking away, you know, dead leaves toward the bottom. And then in about a year's time, we would need to go in and maybe pop a few out here or there to make some room or rework the whole arrangement. I like to do that because usually I kind of want some, to do something different anyway. Uh, but usually a year, maybe even longer than that. Demi said, now that the gorgeous planter is front and center in the Hartley, what are your thoughts for your Christmas tree placement? It is so funny that you guys are so like quick to think of these things that I don't even think about. Like, duh, I put my tree in the middle of the Hartley. So now what am I going to do? <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Put the tree somewhere else. Right. Or put the bird bath somewhere else. Yeah. Anyway, I feel That's like you guys are so much for... smarter than me. You guys remember so much more than I do. Yeah. What'd you say? I'm sorry. Problem for future, Laura. Yeah, exactly. That's how I kind of roll yeah. in my life. Uh, we have been considering taking out that dining table, the round one in there anyway. Um, so it's possible the Christmas tree might be toward one of the ends instead of right smack in the center. And I don't know if I'll like that more or less. I actually think you'll be able to see it more if it's off to the side because you won't have all the door flim flam, like all the, you know, there's just less detail around one end of the Hartley and I think you could see it better. We'll see what happens. Re City Farmet said, love your studio setup, but do you have suggestions for grow lights that are attractive for plants tucked in corners of the house? Maybe I just need a Hartley to overwinter. Um, there's all kinds of different lights you can get. I know Garden Supply has sent out some from time to time. I don't have any here with me. Their, their stuff skews modern and clean, and some of that I really like, but sometimes it doesn't really fit my inside aesthetic. But you can get you can get a regular, a regular old lamp, and you could put a grow light in it and just have a grow light over your, or a regular lamp over your plant. I, I feel like that's a really... Yeah easy solution and there are some really nice grow light systems like we have the bamboo led grow light gardens from gardeners and they're kind of an elevated look i really like these these are the three tier sunlight gardens but they're not as pretty you know they're metal and plastic and and such the bamboo ones are wood and galvanized metal they're very pretty so there are some different options out there sandra miller said i noticed you stopped wearing your vans you may have addressed this and i missed it what uh, made you change um you know, I wore them today. Did you? Yeah, but I think that they were contributing to a little bit of back pain. So I decided to kind of switch things up a little bit. And so now I've just kind of go through Adidas, actually treat my feet the best so far from what I've tried. I've tried a lot of different brands. I, I hate to even have to talk about that because like it makes me feel so old. Like, oh, my back pain, my back pain. My back pain. I got to switch out my shoes. When before I could wear those little, itty, you know, thin flip flops and it didn't even matter. But now I want to say to those people wearing that, like, you're going to regret that. Like, or just treat, enjoy it while you can. Yeah, enjoy it while you can. Or, like, treat your feet really good because one day we'll catch up with, with Health you. is one of those things that you just don't, when you're young, you don't even think about it. I know. For most people. And it's the most valuable thing that you could have. Yeah. <laughs> it's your health, for sure. Rail? Ray, rail. Said, is it smoky or just cloudy? Smoky. It's been smoky. Today it was cloudy. I don't know what it looks like now that the sun is out. I haven't been out there since. Still a little. Still a little it's a lot better, but yeah. still smoky. Garden Girl said, will it just drain to the floor and leave hard water marks on your stone? It would if I didn't watch it. And I have watered it a couple of times since I put it in there, and it hasn't dripped anything because I'm pretty careful with the amount of water that I do give it. But a few of you had a really good suggestion about just popping plants right underneath those three spots, and that way it gives a little bit of weight to the bottom of the arrangement, like maybe a few ferns or something. And then the planter could just drip right onto the plants and just absorb the water and keep the floor That's safe. Good idea. So yeah, I thought that was a great idea. Patricia said, early Christmas question regarding ordering greenery. May I ask when you place an order for your Christmas greenery and is it from a florist? Do you feel that it is fresher? Um, I ordered it through my parents' garden center because they do a garland and wreath making seminar and they do carry fresh cut greens for that purpose. Uh, you can order it from your local florist as well. I think our local florist might even order it from the same place my parents order it from. Uh, the or earlier you can get your order in with one of those 
two sorts of businesses, the better. Uh, and I do think it's fresher. They come in absolutely gorgeous. When you are relying on like going down to Home Depot and getting things, and I do buy some of their Cypress garlands, and I do use those, and they're they're great, but they're not quite as fresh as the stuff we get in the boxes um, to use. It's just that those Cypress garlands, even though they're not like the best looking, they're convenient. I've spent a lot of time making garlands in my day, and I just, I look at our balcony, I think, oh, that garland, it would take me forever. It would look pretty, but it would take forever to make that. Not worth it. It's too far away from our eyes. Sure. Like you get the effect without needing to see detail. The next video is planting three tough, drought tolerant, high performing perennials. And I think I did that in an evening. We had to switch gears because. Oh, yeah. We we're having problems with the hydraulic uh, connections. We were gonna plant one of the big trees yeah. or a couple of the big trees. Uh, I've never had that issue before, but I couldn't get the, the hydraulics switched out. And I was trying to relieve the pressure in every way that I knew how. And then I thought, well, I'll check YouTube. And there are some machines, not ours, but there's some machines that actually have like a hydraulic pressure release oh, and really? you press it and then you hold it for like five seconds and the machine shuts off uh -huh. and then it's released the pressure. I was, uh, you know, adjusting everything and I was trying to relieve the pressure, couldn't. The only thing I didn't do is actually take the connections apart, which I think can also relieve the pressure. Mm -hmm. I've never had to do that before. Mm -hmm. It made me so mad. I felt like a, like a failure. Oh, was it your fault? Well, I kinda. I mean, I do know that it's like a thing that people can struggle with from time mm -hmm. to time. But um, yeah, it's just one of those... One of those things, it just wasn't working out. Yeah, so I already knew I was gonna plant these the next day, so it worked out quite perfect. I just loaded up the gator and there were um, some lavender plants, sweet romance, some coral jade sedum, and some agastache called blue fortune. And they all ended up out in the south garden. We had to plant them pretty quick because the sun was going down, but it was such a pretty time of night. I just loved it. I am Jude today said, how will Laura see, ever see my question? What about deer? Does she ever have problems with them in her area? I have deer and they eat everything, it's so discouraging. We just don't, in the entire, this is the eighth gardening season we've been here. Um, we've had deer in our garden twice and just passing through, like they didn't stop. And like it at was, night? And it was well, a, no, a winter. Well, the time was during the day. It was, yeah, it was during the day, but both times it was winter. Yeah. They haven't ever appeared during the growing season. So uh, we live in an area that's just too populated. There are deer around us, but they're more on the, in the outskirts, in the hills, not right where we're at. Uh, John, John said, I love your gardens. How many existing blue fortune did you have in that drift and how far apart did you plant them? I want to say I probably planted about seven and I probably planted them about as close as I did with these. So whatever that is, 18 inches or so. Paula said, have you or your kids ever been stung by any of these pollinators? My grandchildren have and they are petrified of them. So I try not to plant very many plants that attract them. Oh, um, I've been stung. I don't know if Samantha's been stung. Has Benjamin been stung? That's so weird because I've never been stung. Yeah, their kids have never been stung. I never even consider it. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if people are placing them. I don't know. We've gotten kind of up and up in the plants. Yeah. As long as you're not like messing with them. Or stepping on them on accident. Or stepping on them. Uh, I stepped on a bee once and got stung on the bottom of the foot. It was, it was on clover in someone's grass. Yeah, I wonder if, if like the variety of bee that we have here is more docile and doesn't sting We have us. wasps. Remember, I got stung right in the backside by one. Yeah. In the greenhouse. This last, it was it last, this last winter or the winter before? I was sitting on a bar stool in there. I was doing a video. I was chatting with you guys and it just like, there was a nest right underneath the bar stool seat. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that, that hurt. Yeah. But no, I don't think the kids have ever been stung and they're not I mean, I can imagine, especially Samantha, if she was stung, that would really freak her out. Yeah. She's at that age right now where um, negative things that happen in her life just like... Amplified. Her, like she was playing yeah. with, with the dog, uh, Nathan's dog the other day, yeah. and just having like the best time. Oh, yeah. She trips and falls and she's just on the ground. She's fine for the most part. and then, But the dog was like checking on her to make sure yeah. she's okay. And so the dog's right up in her face and that just scared her. And then she was scared of the dog for a while and we're like... It's fine. You're mm -hmm. fine. You were playing for like an hour with this yeah. dog doing fetch. And the dog and just... was just checking on you. Yeah. But, you know, having a big, being right a little level. a little kid that's, you know, two and mm -hmm. a half feet tall or whatever, three feet. Yeah. You know, I can see how a, a dog would be in your face. could be yeah. kind of scary. Yeah. 
Nancy Zimmerman said, do you have some, I guess you would call generic variety suggestions for those of us who don't have access to Proven Winners brands? Um, boy, I plant, I plant a lot of non-Proven Winners stuff as well. Just things that I find at, garden, at my parents' garden center and other garden centers around. There's a lot of good plants out there. I don't know of like specific, I mean, there's a grower that my parents get from and I know that it's, it's just a regional thing, but they're called Blooming Nursery, and I don't even know where they're out of. Do you know? I don't. They grow the best perennials. They're so great. And that's where I think the hyssop, the Blue Fortune hyssop was from. And they've got such a great selection. Nancy said, are you going to leave your dahlias on the ground this winter, the ones that are for next year? There are a very, very small handful of dahlias that I will dig, like probably one crate or less. I am just not into the whole dahlia storage thing anymore. <laughs> not at the capacity or at the, the rate, the quantity that we have done throughout the years. The rest of them, I will give to friends and family and or leave them in the ground. That's what will happen with all those. I just, I'm getting to a point where like the really labor intensive tasks that just like, it, it's actually cheaper for us to rebuy than to dig, clean, store, and all of that business. And you get to try new varieties out that way. And I'm not gonna grow as many dahlias because yeah. I just don't use them as much as I think I'm going to. Um, I don't miss them at all. I don't miss having like the quantity that we normally have for bouquets and stuff. It's just a different, like from year to year, I just kind of have different feelings about different things. Kind of fun that we can kind of just go with it, you know, yeah. and change an Evolve. area. Yeah, yep. Michelle said, will you still cut the lavender all the way back in the spring? Yep. I will. I will definitely cut it back in the spring. That's how I like to handle lavender. Um, and that way it doesn't allow it to create a woody base, which if you let your lavender create a woody base and then cut it back too far, it can risk be very risky to your plant and possibly likely kill it. Uh, but if you never let it create that woody base, then usually they come back fresh and gorgeous like our sweet romance lavender hedge in front of our vegetable garden. We planted that first year, so seven years ago. Uh, and we cut it back every year and it's beautiful and fresh every year. There's one little spot. I think the drip on the far end, the like closest, not is not functioning. I asked Paul if he would like check into that and sure. do some troubleshooting. Uh, but it's likely we will pull all that drip up and put new drip down this next year. We need to swap out a lot of the drip that we bought from Home Depot. I think that was the That's our weekly. That's yeah. That's the weekly. Yeah. Retreat Chef said, "Would you please talk about that auger? Is it Dewalt? What's it ca called exactly?" Well, yes, I could talk about that auger. <laughs> that is a Garden Answer Edition auger. Uh, I think I used the seven inch in that that for that project, um, and they're just awesome. They're awesome because they don't have near the amount of weight. They're the right height, uh, and they just make it so much easier to dig holes. Um, so we have them in two, three, five, seven, and nine inch diameters. Judy said, no wonder you want more of that hyssop. Now I have to have it too. It's beautiful. When does it bloom? Do you need to shear it back in order to get a second bloom? Uh, it blooms it kind of like uh, salvia in a way. So you get a beautiful first flush of bloom and then you can shear it back by like about half and then you'll see another bloom. But I do have another variety of hyssop out there um, and I don't remember what variety it is and I don't even touch it all season long and it's still blooming beautifully right now. It's got some older blooms on it as well don't really notice those and I love plants like that. Joy uh, said just wondering the very tall grass plant do you cut it down in late fall or early spring or leave it all year? The really tall ones the totem poles out there that get like six feet tall uh, or more some of them it's best to cut those if you get heavy snow loads it's best to cut them down in the fall because then they don't flop over and create a huge mess or lay on other plants that's just easier to do it in the fall brian and tammy olson said what beautiful groupings can you go over again how you will trim the lavender and sedum do you use a hedge trimmer or by hand uh, it depends on if i have my hedge trimmer with me but oftentimes with the lavender and the sedum it's just a spring cut back and i just cut them back to you know i don't know Sedum comes back kind of fresh from the roots and even like the old stalks can be all the way taken down to the crown of the plant. Uh, and then the lavender, I leave it like two inches or so, for maybe three inches from the base of the plant, kind of create like a nice little dome. Next video was our September garden tour. Actually, the next two videos were our September garden tour. We broke it into two pieces because they're long. Uh, we did the area around our house, pond, kind of, did we go back here at all? A little bit. Tour, a little, little bit. Yeah. It, it uh, didn't look that great. No, it looks better time. now yeah. than it did. So we did that in the first tour. And then the second tour was primarily the South Garden. There's so much to see out there. And I took a little more time and talked about more plants. Um, that's kind of the benefit of breaking it up into two. So the first comment is from T. How many hours of sun would you say your Gatsby pink hydrangeas get a day? Oh, the Gatsby pink. So the ones up by the 
big blue spruce, I would say at this point, they're getting less sun than they did before, but they're yeah. getting enough sun in that area for the flocks to bloom and the Russian sage to bloom beautifully I would say in that like area. say like six to eight hours. Yeah, I'd say somewhere in that range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about light. Say, so what does dream stream mean? Beautiful pond area, I love it. It's so funny because when we were doing the pond project last year, I was so like just, oh, I was just kind of in awe of the whole thing. I mean, taking a flat piece of ground and creating a pond in three days and watching these people work together, and it was my first experience being around this kind of situation. And then Brian, who designed the whole pond and did a ton of the work too, I like the physical work, he was just standing there. He's like, we need to do a stream extension. We're going to call it the dream stream. We're going to do it next yeah. year, next year project. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of like, this is just almost like too good to be true. I can't even believe I'm standing here in this beautiful, like in front of this beautiful pond. So the first week of October, we're getting really close. It's like a three day project again, a bunch of contractors are coming. I think there's even one from Scotland that's yeah. flying over for this project. Um, they're coming and we're gonna do like a hundred foot stream extension. It'll be a deep stream. So like 18 -ish inches so that the fish can actually swim the whole thing. And then at the very end of it, there will be another like kind of reservoir. It won't be a big pond, but it'll be a reservoir and I have to do like a little waterfall into it. So that's gonna create so much more movement just overall with all the water um, and all the little extra stuff. There's gonna be a couple of bridges and it's gonna be awesome. I'm yeah. so, I am so looking forward to it. I don't, I usually kind of, cause I get a little bit of like that pre anxiety about mm -hmm. projects or like events things like that, where I'm, I don't, I don't know. Like if You're I don't not know. feeling about it, feeling that with this project? No, I'm just, I'm excited yeah. and I want to get to it and I want people to be here and I want to be like in it because yeah. it was such an inspiring thing and everybody just, just worked so well together. It was a really good experience for me. Really good. And I love the outcome. Cat Gal said, love the tour, Laura. Would you please remind me how many gallons of water your pond holds? 5,000 I think that's what they estimated. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Heather said, what do you think about a life-size chessboard? I've seen some cool ones in old historic gardens, and I think it would fit in with the style. Does anyone in the family like to play chess? Yeah, I, I like love chess. that look. Yeah. I think that's a really fun look. Yeah, that'd be that'd I know be a fun. perfect place where we could put it. You know, it's funny. Paul and I were talking about that just today. Really? We were taking apart the fountain. Uh -huh. um, the, it, the very top piece kind of looks like a pond. It does, That's yeah. why we talked about it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We could put one right off the tennis court there. Yeah, honestly, we can put it there until we do the pool. <laughs> oh, good. Hannah said, do you have a lot of mosquitoes? Yes. <laughs> Just moved to Emmett and they're terrible. Did you feel like there were more mosquitoes in the new property that was mostly grass? Have you noticed more mosquitoes with the pond addition? no mosquitoes around the pond. There are so many dragonflies, so many, that just fly around the pond all day long. And we do have frogs as well. Um, there are more mosquitoes in the loop. Like the yeah. South Garden Loop is probably our heaviest mosquito area. And it area. feels even worse when you get off the grass into the flower bed. Really? Yeah, whenever whenever you and I take, um, whenever we're like walking around doing a garden tour and we walk into the flower bed a little bit, I just start getting eaten up big time. See, I don't, if as long as I have somebody with me, I don't get eaten up at oh, all. Yeah. Like you guys are the host, bring, yeah, the host bring humans. <laughs> can you keep bats as pets? Is that a oh. thing that you can do? Like, will they stay? Well, my parents sell bat houses down at the garden center. We should try to get bats, more bats around here to eat the mosquitoes. That'd be awesome. Because bats are like, good, right? I think so. Like you want them. Yeah. Hmm. And you can use their, the bat guano. Yeah. Yeah. Fertilizer. There you go. Gardening Newbie said, I love your garden tours. Does the purple fountain grass come back each year or do you have to replant those? You do have to replant those. It just blows my mind that of all the grasses in this whole, in all the land, that they haven't made one or haven't come up with one that's perennial in colder zones that looks like that. Yeah. It's such a pretty grass. But maybe that's why we love it so much. Sure. It's unique. Yeah. Mary said, I have a question about augers. Do they rip your arm out of its socket when they get tangled up in roots asking for a friend? No. I mean, you have to, if you consider yourself a very weak, like, like you have a weak upper body, which some people do consider themselves like I'm not super strong in my arms, probably wouldn't recommend like a huge auger. I mean, you might be able to do the smaller ones. Um, and even if you consider yourself a stronger person, which I, I feel like through the years I've been able to do some pretty, yeah, like you would heavy. consider yourself a confident person, yeah. but I still like, I still try to like lock the core, you yeah. know what I mean? So that if anything happens, I'm kind of prepared for it. You wouldn't want to just fly into it just like, you know, all nimbly. 
bimbly, like yeah. like too loose. It does have, they call it like an e-brake system or something like that. E-clutch, mm-hmm. I forget what it is, like emergency, whatever. But if it encounters something, uh, it will like die instead of ripping your arm mm-hmm. out, theoretically. And it does. I mean, I've never had it rip mine. My mom, <laughs> the first time I showed her the drill, the auger, it's when we had the original the auger, oh, yeah. not the garden answer edition. So the nine inch is like super heavy. And it was back before they had the new 60 volt drill. It was uh-huh. the stud and joist drill at yeah. that point. So heavy. I would not lug that thing around now at this point. I don't think I could. Yeah. Not, not very long anyway. But I was showing my mom and they have super like tough soil for that. And she was not prepared. She didn't have, and that one's a lot shorter too. So you're like bent over uh, and she wasn't. She was kind of just standing there and just let it go. And it just whipped around, hit her right in the leg and took her down. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's just, <laughs> that's not great. Like the first time you show somebody something that you think is just amazing. Yeah. And it you also don't them. have to go 100%. You know, right. you can stand there and you can pull the trigger a little bit and you can turn it slowly. And sometimes I'll do that if I'm in an area that's a little, I'm not sure about. And you can kind of just, that way, if you know, I've noticed some people, yeah, they'll get on it like your mom. Yeah. And just like, boom, 100%. Yeah. And <laughs> they're not prepared. Yeah. So if you kind of just go, go gingerly. Mm-hmm. Robin said, love your garden tour. It's so beautiful and lush. Question, does your weeping willow sap out of the, uh, onto the statue? My dad has one and it weeps sap all over his truck. Ugh. Are you sure it's not aphids? Yeah. We th- willows don't really weep sap. That That's got to be aphids. Yeah. I would check the tree for aphids because... I have never had any sticky, any kind of substance come out of our willows. And maybe it's a different variety. Maybe it's a different kind. I don't know. But if you have aphids on a tree, the only thing you could do is like a systemic, right? To well, prevent that. Yeah. Once they're that on. That would the... probably be the more more responsible thing than just Because you're not going to spray a, yeah. a giant tree. Well, you could spray a big tree, I mean, with a hose end sprayer, but that's really a bad way to apply spray yeah. like that. And I would think uh, you would have to cover yourself completely in PPE because you would be underneath this huge mist. Right. And then um, you also have run the risk of not hitting the whole thing. Right. You know, a systemic would probably be the best on that. Lori said, what do you do about the string algae? Do you just leave it? So there is a little bit of string algae in there right now, kind of in the wetlands area and then on the waterfall. We need to use some more of that. What's it called? I Yeah, we've got some stuff for it. Um, yeah, what's it? String algae buster? Uh-huh. S... A B. A B. Mm-hmm. Um, I we haven't because they're gonna come and kind of like tear a lot of the pond apart to make way for the stream, and they're gonna drain it all mm-hmm. for the. Well, so I'll, yeah, we'll get out the power washer at that point, and we can just power wash it off. Uh, but we've really dealt with very little algae after that initial yeah. kind of issue that we had, and it's been super pleasant. I don't mind a little bit because I feel like it almost lends to a little bit more of a natural feel. Yeah, like not a swimming pool sort of situation. It looks more natural like you would find up somewhere in the mountains, which is what we're going for. So it doesn't bother me the amount that's in there now. It did earlier this season. Like well, that was Well, it too was much. a ton. Yeah, it was, was too much. felt like there was more algae than water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the next video was the second part of the September garden tour, so of the South Garden. Uh, Maine said, "What is that glorious green yellow tree behind Laura at 1755? It's beautiful." That's the Shawnee Brave bald cypress and they are very chartreuse yeah they are, i like the um texture mm-hmm. that they provide because it's, it's unique yeah it's a really unique tree it's very ferny looking yeah very soft yeah it feels really soft and mm-hmm. and but you don't see that type of a texture in that size and it'll get way bigger than what it is now mm-hmm. i love it yeah Lori craft said can you please repeat the name of the flower at the beginning of this video that is the most fra- fragrant thing that you've ever grown the beautiful pink flowers that is the el nino chitalpa it desert is desert orchid yeah desert orchid is a common name it is a blend of a catalpa tree and a desert willow they blend those two plants together they get this beautiful most fragrant thing ever i think it's like the star plant uh-huh. of, of this year yeah for sure. Maybe just because we didn't think we could grow it. And so we were so happy that... And we thought they all died and then they came it's back. It's the fragrance. When you're driving mm-hmm. around, it just, it smacks you in the face it, mm-hmm. in a good way. Yeah. And you're just like, what is that awesome smell? And Every night when we drive through, I'm like, oh, Chitapa. Yeah. <laughs> mm, it it reminds so you good. that it's there because it smells so good. Aaron just ordered 15. Yeah. 
we're gonna, we're gonna put them everywhere because they are amazing, amazing plants. Julia and Bob said, oh my goodness, everything looks so nice. Do you still have all, um, your all dressed up rose? Yes, we do. I planted one this spring and it's so pretty. I wanted to get two more, but wondered if yours made it through winter. Yes, um, all three of ours did and they look beautiful right now. I did have to cut them pretty much all the way back to the nub this year. And I had to do that the year before too. And this year though, they looked even a little bit more sketched than they did last year. And so I kind of thought, oh, I don't know what these are gonna do, but they came back. Roses are tough, tough plants. And those flowers are just beautiful. Lion Hawaii said, could you tell us more about hardy geraniums compared to maverick geraniums? Can you start them from seed? You know, I haven't really done a whole lot of searching for hardy geranium seed. They're probably out there. Uh, maverick geraniums are a type of zonal geranium, like the pelargonium, and they are different. They're just a different type of plant. Um, hardy geraniums, most of them are hardy to like zone, I want to say four or five right in there. And they're amazing. They're amazing perennials, but completely different flower, different leaf, everything. Jay Miracle said, how often do you fertilize your hydrangeas and with what fertilizer? So we fertilize in the early spring. We could probably do another application around June, but we'll use like holly tone. We've used rose plant, tone. Rose tone. We've Those used are the two, the main, main ones. The main ones. Yeah. yeah. I think I've probably used plant tone at one point. Yeah. You know? but holly toad and uh, rose tone, mainly. Dale said, isn't lemon coral sedum a perennial? You just said it is an annual. Please clarify for me, it is an annual. It does not survive through the winter here. Michelle said, how long do you continue to fertilize your annuals? Well, we fertilized last week. We have had a little bit of a lull because we ran out of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. um, we just got more, so, uh, but we're having kind of a cool down. So we probably will fertilize a couple more times. Yeah, and then be done be done by the end of September. Probably. Yeah. Jennifer said, when should you cut back your dogwood? I have the same and will need to cut it back for the small space I put it in. I'm going to cut my back in early spring, right before they push uh, new growth. That way we can enjoy the stems that they have now through the winter and then they can push new ones for next year. Garden Therapy said, will you pull all the new Proven Winter's Dahlias this winter or, or will you just treat them as an annual? You know what? It depends. I think their dahlias are not bred like they, they don't produce a ton of tubers. I don't think they produce tubers like the ones that we grow out in the Dahlia area. I'll have to see, you know, once we dig them up, but I do recommend those plants. They are so awesome. High performers in our garden. And I kind of thought when we got them, like they've got pretty flowers, but we'll see, you know, it's a short Dahlia. I'm used to these big Dahlias and I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy them. It's a them. nice addition it's in the like, garden. Yeah, they're beautiful. And they, they don't get so wild. Yeah. That's the problem with the other dahlias, the big ones. Yeah, they do, they do get really wild. Next video is project updates. I updated you on a few things, the great trees, the Lonicera topiaries, and also the Blonde Ambition Blue Grandma grass that we took out of the winter sowing water jug. 60 little plant starts and planted them up in four inch containers and now they're big and they're producing the little seed heads. It's just amazing that 60 plants, 60 perennial grasses came from one water jug, one packet of seeds and a little bit of soil. It's just amazing to me. And then my friend Natalie came over and we dug a whole bunch of plants from back where the dream stream is going to be going. I, you know, could dig those plants and put them somewhere out in the garden, but we've got a lot of things going on. And if somebody wants to come and I will help them and then dig plants and they can take them to their garden, that makes me just as happy. So we had a great time digging and filling her trailer up with stuff. And then we ended up planting that Norway spruce that we had tried to do the day before or maybe it was two days before. I don't remember the lineup of all of it. Bob said, you're a busy bee. How do you sleep? Does your brain ever turn off? Not really. My brain kind of turns. Well, no. Sometimes. Your brain cranks up at night. Yeah, I'm a pretty bad sleeper. I've never been one that requires a tremendous amount of sleep. Like not the full eight. I think Benjamin got that from you. Yeah, Benjamin He's up early either. before all of us. Yeah, he goes to bed late and gets up early and he's, and he's fine. He's never been a kid that gets tired and like, gets cranky or weepy yeah. he just goes he just doesn't require sleep yeah um Samantha. and he has every opportunity to sleep as much as he yeah. wants too it's like, we don't wake the kids up at a certain time in the morning like yeah. they get to sleep when, to whenever they wake up um samantha she'll sleep till like 9 30 10. Yeah. <laughs> we do we are kind of night owls though yeah. so there is that but yeah i feel like as i'm getting older i'm sleeping worse and like not the best way well and they say that's really bad too like not getting consistent sleep. Yeah. It like ages you a lot faster than a lot of things. Yeah. I need some help. <laughs> Susan said, just wondering if you ever, or if you cut back your ir iris. Yes, I do cut back my iris in the fall with everything else usually, or with a lot of other things. 
Sometimes in the spring. Kind of just depends on when it fits in. Larea said, can you talk about a little bit about transplanting peonies? Is it true that they are tricky and don't like to be moved, as I have heard? True or false? In my experience, false. I have dug peonies. I just try to get as big of a root ball as I can. Keep them wet. They will look horrible the first year or, you know, if you do it too early in the season. But then you just cut them back and let them flush back the next year. And I've had them just come back beautifully and bloom beautifully, like even more beautifully than they did in the spot before. I have never had one die or um, not come back. So, and I haven't moved a ton of peonies, but I've moved plenty, you know. So hopefully the ones that we dug for Natalie will do just as great. P. Hammond said, lucky Natalie in what a haul. Once again, your kindness shines through. I can't wait for the dream stream. Me too. I literally live vicariously through you. Question, will you be able to leave that succulent arrangement out in the winter? I live in 9B where I can leave mine out, but just brought another, bought another property in 7A, which I think is also your planting zone. We are a zone uh, six for sure. Um, uh, the Semper Vivums, they are hardy down to like what, four, something like that. I don't know. I could leave that, that container out as long as it got enough moisture, it would be completely fine. I don't think I probably will because they make for a great plant inside too. And even better in kind of the mid range temperature that we keep our high tunnel. So I'll probably bring it in there cause it's so easy to move. But if I had it in a larger container that was harder to move, I think it would be fine to stay out. Susan said, have you planted any aspen trees? You guys were just talking yeah, about we that with my parents. They don't they, do great here. No, they don't, they don't do really well, but they do great up in the mountains. I guess they require an enormous amount of water. Like way more than birch trees, way yeah. more. And we do birch trees, but Well, and yeah. you know, you usually see aspens, well we do, right along like a creek yeah. or a river. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we don't we don't usually plant them. Mm -mm. They're very pr uh, prone to borers as well mm. in our area, more than most things. So they're so pretty. Yeah. Mm. Megan said, "I love blue grandma blonde ambition grass, but I can't find seeds here in Canada. Where do you guys get yours? Botanical interests. Hit Kevin up. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's where I got mine. My parents actually sell botanical interests down. Botanical interests is that? Is it botanical interest or botanical interests? Interests. Interests. I don't know." <laughs> Anyway, they sell them down at their garden center. So that's where I picked up mine. And I, I don't know if they can ship into Canada or... Probably not. Probably not. I doubt Ooh, it. That's such a pain. Yeah. Um, yeah Just that's... have a friend. Yeah. Of course, they'll probably ask you, you when you drive in, are you bringing any seeds? No. No. <laughs> you didn't hear that from us. <laughs> Don't call, don't call us in. Somebody yeah. will. Okay. Gardening grandma said, just curious about the succulent arrangement you revamped. You uh, mentioned that some echeverias are suitable for outdoors while others are not. How do you know the difference? The plant tags aren't clearly marked. Most echeverias for us cannot survive the winter. Um, and a lot of echeverias, they kind of term those as soft succulents, can't handle our full sun here. Uh, it's a little bit too much on them and it burns them. Uh, so uh, Semper Vivums are kind of a nice option because they have the same rosette sort of shape as an echeveria with the hardiness that we need them to have both winter hardiness and sun hardiness sally thompson said just curious what are your thoughts on gorilla carts oh they are good 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 carts wow. i'm in need of a new garden cart that moves easily and candle can handle a load i would get the seven cubic foot one right that's the one well it just depends on how big your yard is and what you need that was my favorite i mean we have a big yard and i like that one better than the biggest one that they have yeah it's the perfect size. I feel like you can load it up with a decent amount of stuff to where you feel like you're making progress sure. and it still has the um, dump feature. Yeah. So you can dump your, you know, load into a compost pile or wherever you're dumping it. And it's got big tires. It moves really easily and it can hook up to the back of your, it's still got that hookup to the back of a, yeah. a gator or, or four wheeler or whatever you have. You just run into situations where you need different, you need different carts for different yeah. applications. It's like, true. um, you know, sometimes you want to haul something and so you want the one with the sides that can come The little off metal one. Because you're trying to haul something that's like kind of an awkward yeah. shape and you need to set it on something, mm -hmm. but wheel it a distance. So you need no sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know. Or you, you want to wash things within the cart. Yeah. Like maybe it's kind of heavy or whatever, but you know, mm -hmm. so you need something that can drain. True. Because the poly ones don't have drain holes, although you can drill to create drain holes if you want to. You could, I've never needed it to hold water before. Yeah. I think we did a video, I don't know how long ago, where we had all the carts lined up in the grass back here. Oh, yeah, we did. Is that still out there? Yeah, and I think it was, was it just a sponsored video? Like I don't remember. 
I think it was. I think was we it? were just showing all their cards. Can you imagine doing that now? Maybe we should. Now that we have so much experience with these cards, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like we've put all of them through the ringer. Yeah. And that seven is my favorite. I think out of all of them, we use the seven and I use the flat metal one the most. We don't ever use the sides. The sides have been taken off and they're away. Um, I use it for uh, transporting, tra transporting, transporting uh, flats of annuals because you can let them hang off the sides right. and you can fit more flats on right. by doing it that That's way. That's what I mean. Yeah, Depending it's true. On Those two are the ones that I use the most often. They're all really great. Okay, the last group of questions here are from the recap from last week. So Gary said, need some advice, Laura. We uh, need to move 10 four-year-old limelight hydrangeas because of an upcoming construction project. Any tips or advice to make the move less stressful for them and us? I don't think we can wait till spring to move them. Zone six, seven. Uh, by the way, I hope you know how, s oh, sweet. The rest of it's a very sweet comment. Uh, what I would do is wait, wait until as late in the season as you possibly can. Make sure the root balls are moist. Get as big of, the, of a root ball as you can and introduce it into a moist hole that you've already pre-dug, like if you can. If you can move them back into the ground somewhere and then just water them really well. That's what we do. And I think that they should move just fine for you. Cheryl said, do you ever mention on the main channel that answers can be found here on this channel? I don't remember it being mentioned. I know I found this channel by mistake when searching for you before I subscribed. I don't think I've mentioned it ever. You never promote it. No. Should we? Maybe. I, don't I never know. thought about it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> the algorithm sort of determines what people see these sure. days it kind of feels a little bit like you know we've tried to promote certain things like you know on facebook we've tried to be like go watch the videos on youtube and people just don't and yeah. they just use the platform they're going to use mm -hmm. and i don't know the algorithm is in control yeah a little bit janice said how do you reduce or stop weeds taking over the seeded grass area before the grass is mature i don't know um, when we planted up here in the front, we weeded it by we, hand. You weeded it by hand. Well, I had some help there. Yeah. Yeah. Back here, it looks awesome. And there's like no weeds. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to stop weeds because you, you kind of have to just go through the process of like tilling mm -hmm. or working the soil up a little bit. So it's a, you know, but then you kind of have to pack it down a little bit again yeah. and smooth it out, mm -hmm. but you're not packing it down hard. You're just... Mm -hmm tamping it right um and getting it smooth again and you just kind of hope for the best i don't know yeah it looks so good back there but up in the big lawn there and the amount of weeds it was you crazy. know why i bet you i bet you it's because this was lawn before this didn't have near the amount of That's weeds true. that was raw pasture that just had whatever they took good care of it like there was no thistle there wasn't kosher growing up in it. It was like pasture grass, sort of dryland grass. Yeah. But then underneath there's bindweed and all that stuff that you really can't control unless you want to spray it. Um, so there were, you know, yeah, tons of spurge, tons of goat heads, puncture vine. You know, I don't recall ever tilling up in the front. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder if that was part of the problem. I don't know. I just feel like that was way cleaner because Maybe. it was just grass before. And, it could be. And he kept the weeds out of it for the most yeah, part. Yeah, he did, totally. Mm -hmm. Wendy said, do you plan on or have a place to ride your horses other than your own property? Nope, just here. For the most part, we've created some nice areas yeah. to go around. You have to have the kids go behind you with the pooper scooper. Yeah, <laughs> the kids. <laughs> Builds character, kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> I feel like that was my, ch my childhood. Yeah. Builds character sort of childhood. The horses can go on gravel. Right? I don't mm -hmm. think it's as good as a grassy area. Oh. Yeah, or like the, we'll have a round pen and then we'll have the paddocks. We have lots of grassy areas. We'll, we'll figure it out. That, that's the situation for another day yeah. to think about. Future Laura. Yeah. And you guys, that is it for this week's recap video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember the 10% off the things that we talked about at the beginning of the video, the bulb tone, iron tone, evergreen, evergreen tone. tone, dead weed, brew, right? Um, Aaron's looking up the details. Blood meal. And blood meal. I forgot that one in the beginning. Anyway, that's what the description box is for. It's at gardenanswer.com. I hope you guys all have a great week, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.